All right, welcome to Anton Math. In this video, we're going to be looking at graphing the basic secant and cosecant curves. Now you'll notice I don't have my unit circle up this time. We're not going to be deriving these ones directly from the unit circle. Um, instead, we're going to be using what we know about sine and cosine. Now the first thing to note is that secant and cosecant both have the same period of sine and cosine, and this should make sense um, because of how closely they are related. But putting this on paper, we know that secant of x plus 2 pi is going to be equal to secant of x. And similarly, cosecant of x plus 2 pi is going to be equal to cosecant of x. Oops. Right, and this should make sense. Um, for example, let's look at cosecant. I know that cosecant of x, uh, this is the same thing as 1 over sine of x, isn't it? So if sine of x repeats itself every 2 pi, then cosecant of x is also going to repeat itself every 2 pi. Uh, exactly, right? It's not going to repeat itself before that or after that. But let's start off with this cosecant. Let's say I have my y equals cosecant of x, and I've written it here as 1 over sine of x as well. Uh, this makes it very easy for us to figure out this graph. Now I, I have our sine graph here, and looking at our sine graph we can kind of pick out some of the properties of this cosecant. First of all I know that whenever sine is equal to 0 I'm going to have an asymptote, right? So if sine is 0 I have an asymptote, that happens here at x equals 0, so I have an asymptote here on the y-axis. That happens when x equals pi, right? We see here that sine is equal to 0, so cosecant is going to have an asymptote. And it happens at x equals 2 pi. So I have these three different asymptotes in the graph of cosecant. Now I also know that when sine equals 1, well, 1 over 1 is just 1, so cosecant is also going to be 1. So I can look right here where sine peaks out, and cosecant and sine share this point right at this peak. But cosecant's different in that we see here that as sine gets smaller to the left and to the right of this point, cosecant is going to get larger, right? Sine is going to be smaller and smaller, so 1 over a number that gets smaller is a number, as a total number, is getting bigger and bigger, right? We saw that in our last video looking at tangent and cotangent. So my cosecant graph is going to be 1 over sine and follow in this fashion. It's going to go larger and larger and larger, and it's going to start getting closer and closer to parallel to this asymptote, right? And the same thing over here. As sine gets closer to zero, cosecant gets larger and larger and larger. Now when sine is negative one, cosecant is one over negative one, so it's also negative one. So they're going to share this point down here as well. And as sine gets closer to zero, um, cosecant is going to get more and more negative, right? Sine is a negative number here, so it's getting closer to zero. Cosecant is becoming a larger negative number. So it's going to approach these asymptotes like this. And that's it. This is one period of cosecant. I'm going to go ahead and take the sine away. Oops. Oh, it looks like I did those in the same. Okay, I'm not going to take the sign away. But if you look at the light blue, that light blue is our one period of cosecant. All right, let's take a look at secant now. We can look at secant the same way by looking at cosine. Now here's my base period of cosine from zero to two pi. So cosecant, or, or sorry, secant. Let me get rid of this. Cosecant. Oh, I can't. Why can't I? Get, oh. Aha, now make that same mistake again. So secant, if I have y equals secant of x, that's the same as y equals one divided by cosine of x, right? So anywhere that cosine is equal to zero, I'm gonna have an asymptote, because secant's gonna be one over zero, or in other words, does not exist here. All right. Wherever cosine is 1, my secant is going to be 1 over 1, which is also 1, so at these two endpoints here. And as cosine gets closer to 0, secant explodes, right? Secant gets further away from 0. 
So uh, my outsides look like this. And then where cosine is negative 1, my secant is negative 1. And as it gets closer to 0, as cosine gets closer to 0, secant gets further from 0. So now let's see if I did it right this time. I can go ahead and take my cosine graph away. And we're left with just the graph of secant, right? Now, that's it. Those are my two base graphs. Here's my secant. And uh, one more time, I'll, uh, I'll bring back cosecant up so you can see the difference. This is secant. This is cosecant. Just like with sine and cosine, they look similar, but it looks like they kind of start uh, just off of each other. And that's true. That's pretty much what's happening. Um, now, in the next video, I'm going to do some examples uh, with all of these functions, with uh, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant, and give you some tools that will make it easier for you to draw these kind of functions. They can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Um, so if you're doing any homework problems, you need some help, make sure to watch the next video.